Um, we're going to continue our discussion on the Agados, the weekly, late the weekly parsha, and uh, today we're also going to um, look at what I think is perhaps the po- most difficult pasuk in the Torah. And it's not, it's not going to be the first pasuk we're going to look at in the beginning of the sources, but uh, we are going to see what I believe even the Gemara admits, or at least the, 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 the questioning of the Gemara seems to be one of the most difficult pasuk in the Torah, if not the most difficult pasuk in the Torah. So we're told um, this parsha, of course, is by Yechiel, the last of the and discusses the death of Yaakov Avinu, as well as the the bracha, you can call them bracha, I guess, that he gives to his children, including the bracha he gives to Yosef. So we're going to start by looking at the pesukim when it describes the bracha that Yaakov gives to Yosef, and um, some of these words are no doubt very familiar to us. So it says, "Vayivarech." We're going to start with Bereshis parsha Vayichiel, Parak Memches, Pasuk Tesvav. So the Pasuk says, Vayavarech is Yosef. Vayomar, and he said to him, Ha'alokim, Asher Hisalchu, Avasai Lefanav, Avram, V'Yitzchak. Ha'alokim, Ha'roa Osi, Me'odi, Ahi, Yomazem. So he, the, he, he blesses in the name of the, his father, who had also uh, been there for his father, Avram and Yitzchak. And he refers to him as Ha'alokim, the God Ha'roa, who has shepherded me, who, who has provided for me, who has looked after my needs. From my entire life, until this point in my life. And then he continues and he says, Hamalach osimi kora. So too, the Malach, which has been goal, which has redeemed me from all evil, Yivarech Eshane Arim, Yikarei Behem Shemi Veshem Avram Vyitzvah, Vyitzvah Arov Vakarav Aretz. And similarly, the Malach, which has been goal, which has redeemed me, Yikarei from all evil in my life, Yivarech Eshane Arim, he shall bless the Arim of the children. Now, if you look at the Psukim, he refers to Ha'elokim Haroasi, the God who has provided for me, who has shepherded after me, has looked after my physical needs. And the Torah refers to. Hi, guys, to, everyone go to the NPR to buy raffle tickets for High Life Live. And yet, in that Thank same you. bracha, he refers to the Malach Hagolasi, the Malach which has been Goel me. Seemingly, that when it comes to our physical needs, Hakadosh Baruch Hu takes care of them Himself. It says Ha'elokim Haroa Osi. But yet, when it comes when it comes to the redemption of the Jewish people, the Geula of the Jewish people, the spiritual redemption of the Jewish people, that that task is given over to a Malach. Whatever that means, that's given over to a Malach. I guess we can discuss separately. But there seems to be that when it comes to the physical sustenance, Hashem Himself provides in the Torah. Ha'elokim Haroa Osi. When it comes to the Geula, our redemption. Even if it's an, indivi- an individual redemption, but the geula is hamalach agolosi. So the Gemara itself makes no sense. What are we to make of this? The fact that that uh, you would think that of those two tasks of the providing the physical sustenance for the Jewish people and providing the geula for the Jewish people, you think of those two tasks, the one that's, that's more difficult is is the geula. So that leads the Gemara in Masechus Pesachim, at the very end of Masechus Pesachim, to make a statement. It's a very a very strong statement. The Gemara says in Masechus Pesachim. This is the Agarita for today. It says there uh, in the Gemara, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Kashin Mizonasov Shal Adam Yosem in Agula. It is more difficult for a person to receive his sustenance for Hashem. It's more difficult for Hashem to provide his sustenance for a human being. Yoter in Agula, more so than it is difficult for Hashem to provide the Gula. So the physical well-being, the sustenance of a person, comes with, with more ease than the Gula itself. And how does the Gemara know this? Because when it comes to the Geul, the Torah writes, Hamalach ha'goel osi mikol ra. Malach ba'alma. A malach, a simple malach. Dila b'mizonos k'siv, but when it comes to the sustenance of a person, it says, Ha'alokim ha'roa osi. The Gemara makes this comment. Wow. So we're going to have to, of course, understand what this means exactly. What does it mean? Like, Kashin mizonos of sh'alim osi mikol The person's physical sustenance is more difficult to be provided for by Kaddish Baruch Hu. Than the Google itself. Any suggestions? Any? No? Okay. <laughs> Let's continue. Even though this is really not. Oh, very good. That is not an easy thing to do. It's not easy for us to, to have to work for it. And, so, and the Gemara implies it's not even easy for a Kaddish Park to provide it for us. And that's exactly what the next line in the Gemara says. Even though it's not completely related to this point, we'll read it anyhow. Amar Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Sir Yeshua ben Levi, B'sha she'amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu la'adam kotz v'dardar tatzmiach lach. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to Adam Arishan that as a punishment, 
you will plow the fields, but all you'll get will be thorns and thistles. There will be tatsmiachla. They'll, they'll, they will. They're, they're, that's what the land is going to produce. Zal guain of demos. Adam Rishon began to cry. Amar lefana. Rabona shalolam. Aniva chamor rinechal ba'avus echad. You mean to tell me that me and my chamor, my donkey, are going to eat from the same trough? Do you mean to say the same thorns, the same thistles that my chamor is going to eat? That's going to be my destiny as well. So then, Kevin Shamar La, when Akash Baruch continues and he says, Bezeyes Apecha Tochalachem, through the sweat of your brow you will eat bread, Niskara Daita. So he cooled off a little bit. He understood that although it's going to come with great difficulty, it doesn't mean that he's going to eat with the animals. It doesn't mean he's going to be no better off than the animals. Because but Lachem, bread is for uniquely human. Only, only human beings have the ability to produce bread. And this is a funny line of the Gemara. I'm Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, says Rish Lakish, Ashrenu, uh, Ashrenu, we are, we are lucky. Vimana Bri Shona, um, Vadaya lo, lo, lo paltinan mine. We're lucky, for if we had just been with the first one, and it would have just said, uh, it's quotes for Dardar, Tatsmiak, and we wouldn't have had the second one, so then we would have been, we would have been, we should be thankful for what we have. At least we have bread, at least we're not several thorns and thistles. And then, uh, I'm not sure why here, and it doesn't quote it in the, in the version here, but I think it's Abaye says that it's not it's actually true. We do actually eat thorns and thistles. Because because man still has to eat lettuce and vegetation off the ground. So, speaking like a good red, red-blooded American, Abaye says we don't have, we do still have part of the curse. Man is cursed to still eat vegetation. Still cursed to eat thistles? Well, not thorns and thistles per se, but vegetation from the ground. It's not all bread. We also have to eat lettuce and Brussels sprouts. Okay, Bama Rabbi, Bama Rabbi Shizavi, Shizvi, Mishmei de Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah, Kashim is on Asaf shall Adam Kriyas Yamsuf. It is difficult for a Kaddish Baruch to provide sustenance for mankind as it is Kriyas Yamsuf, for, for him to split the Yamsuf. So, um, these Gemara, these gemara, this gemara is difficult. It's difficult because of the reason that we said why is it more difficult, but I think the more fundamental problem, more theological problem with the Gemara is not just that one is more difficult than the other, and why is Mizono so much more difficult than the Gula, so much more difficult than the Kriyas Yamsuf, but there's something inherently difficult about the word Kushin, that is, something is difficult. Why? Because we're talking about Kaddish Baruch. So what does it mean that anything is difficult for a Kaddish Baruch? What does it mean to say that any... Like a, what, how can anything be hard for Hashem? Hashem is the definition of doing anything that He, he wills to do. So therefore, it means Hashem for some reason has to overcome something in order to provide whether it be Kriyas Yamsuf, whether it be Mzunos, we'll see in Eskimar, there are other things that we're, we're told are difficult, difficult for a Kaddish Baruch Hu. So what Baruch Friedman, mean? please come to Mizraf's office. It was a punishment that he had in the Okay, maybe, maybe it could mean that it's it's, um, it's difficult because he felt it was a, did with a heavy heart, almost like that kind of difficult. It could be. Okay, that's possible. Um, although, if you look at at least the second uh, the second statement in the Gemara, Kashim is an on the Yamsuf. So it sounds to be that of these two tasks, this is more difficult, not just in terms of like the emotional step, but the fact that he had, the fact that he the the act of doing it. The, the physical act of providing, although I, I hear what you're saying, very good. And then, uh, yeah, the, the Torah Tamima brings a, a different gear to the Gemara and Megillah that says that Gadol, it's the greatness of a Kaddish Baruch that he provides in his own us. The Kashin here doesn't necessarily mean difficult physically or difficult for Kaddish Baruch in that sense, but meaning it, it's, it's, um, it, it's an appreciation of the fact that a Kaddish Baruch even involves himself in these difficult tasks. Almost like the greatness of a Kaddish Baruch is that even, he doesn't give it off to a Malach, he gives the task of providing physical sustenance takes care of himself, even though it's a very physical act. When we think of uh, Hashem's, Hashem's worldview, which it, we think it's all spiritual in nature, and it's, there's no time for the physical, Hashem doesn't pawn this off on anyone else. He himself is the one who provides physically for us. But taking the Gemara at least at face value, it's difficult. And it's not, as, as, said, as we said, it's not the only time that things are described as being difficult for Hashem. The, the, the Medrash Rabbah says, this is Amar of Yudun, source number three, um, Amar of Yudun says the Gemara, why is the death of Aaron in Parshas Ekev uh, next to the Shviras Luchos, next to the breaking of the Luchos? Now, the reason why that's a good question is because although this is Devarim, and Devarim is recounting the events that took place over the past 40 years, those two events are very far apart. Aaron dies right, before, right at the very end of the Jewish people's journey through the Midbar, and the Luchos are broken at the very beginning. Those two events are 40 years apart. So would you ask the question, what, what's, the, what's the juxtaposition of those two, those two events? Why are they included next to each other in the Torah? So the Medrash says 
Medjah Mirka Rabba commenting on this on this juxtaposition that comes up in Devarim and Ekev. That the death of Aaron Cohen is as difficult as the breaking of the Luchos themselves. Okay? So, add to the list now. Sustenance is hard for Hashem. Google is hard for Hashem. Kriyas Yamsuf is hard for Hashem. Now we also have the death of Aaron is hard for Hashem, and the breaking of the Luchos is hard for Hashem. And for some reason, the death of Aaron is even more difficult than the breaking of the Luchos. So we're going to try to give an answer uh, based on something that I saw in the Sefer Drash David. Um, he says it in two different places that um, will hopefully answer these questions and also hopefully give some insight into um, the Sukkim from our Parsha from Vayichi. But before we do that, before we do that, um, speaking about difficulty and things that are difficult for a Kaddish Baruch Hu, um, and you know, just, just one second before we get there, just in terms of our own calling the Luchos, so just think, of, forget, we, have to, we have to address the fact that it's a theological question that has to be addressed, not going hard for a but even think about the comparison. Right? The death of Aaron and Cohen, as hard as it was to the Jewish people, it wasn't unexpected, right? He was a human being. And we all know that all human beings, right, their date, their time comes at a certain point. Even, though, even though Mrs. Parsha, we're told Yaakov Inu Lomis, but aside from the rare exception, whether Yaakov Inu really didn't die, or Sarah Basasha, or whatever the case might be, people, people perish after 120 years. So that was expected, right? So the Luchos was not. So what does that mean? How are they even comparable? And why is one more difficult? Either it implies that Aaron was never supposed to die, right? That's why it was difficult. Or it implies the Luchos were supposed to be broken, right? Because his is more difficult. So the Luchos were meant to be broken when they were created, which is also difficult. So no comparison doesn't make sense. We're comparing apples and oranges, it seems to be. So that's, diff- that's hard to explain also. But anyhow, talking about things that are difficult, so as we began, we said that, you know, most people are familiar with the discussion put in the, in the Hakdama. Today in Yaakov, what's the most important pasuk in the Torah? You know, the most important pasuk. So, is it Shema Yisrael? Is it Lahat Hashem Lokecha? Is it Shema Lokecha? The Gemara there suggests that the Keves had to be brought every day in the in the Carbon Tumid. The Keves had to be brought every day in the in the Carbon Tumid. Continuity is the, the most important pasuk in the Torah, whatever it may be. But we never have a discussion of what's the hardest pasuk in the Torah. What's the most difficult pasuk in the Torah to understand? But if you were to ask me, and this is what the Gemara seems to think also, one of the most difficult pasukim in the Torah is in Parshas Ekev. Speaking of Parshas Ekev, it's in source number four. And we'll see right now why this pasuk is so difficult. So the, um, the Gemara, um, and hopefully this understanding of what it means, something it means to be difficult in the context of human beings, right, in the context of human thought, um, will help us understand why, what it means when something's difficult for a Kaddish So um, we're at the Gemara in source number five. The Gemara says, this is a Gemara in Brachos, Tafal, and Gimel, and Mabes. Amar Rabbi Chanina. Says Rabbi Chanina. Hakol bidei shemayim, chutz miyeres shemayim. Chutz miyeres shemayim. Everything is in the hands of, of heaven, except for fear of heaven itself. Shneemar, as it says, Va'ata Yisrael. And now Israel. Ma Hashem elokecha sho'am yimcha. What does Hashem, your God, ask of you? Ki im liyira, but to fear Hashem, your God. Right. So what does Hashem ask of you? What's your responsibility? Ki'im liyira es Hashem alekechem. Now, um, why is it such a hard pasuk? Why is it such a hard pasuk? Look at the words in the, um, look at the words ki'im. What does ki'im mean? Ki'im liyira. But to fear him. Which makes it sound like, what does Hashem ask of you? Ki'im, simply to fear him. Like a very small matter. Right? Is it really such a small matter to fear a Kaddish Baruch? Is it really such a small matter? We're talking about fear like being afraid of Hashem. We're talking about like Yerash Shemaim. This whole concept of Yerash Shemaim. Like that thing that we, we strive for our entire lives. Is to always have Hashem front and foremost in my mind and, and in my life. The Gemara, the Torah seems to call it a, 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 a Milsa Zutra, as we've seen in a second. It calls it a small thing. Ki Lira, but to fear Him. You know, and you can ask a similar question. The Rambam says in source number, before we'll get back to the Gemara in a second, but the Rambam says in source number six, he says, Rishos l'chol adam nesuna, permission is granted to all people, in Rotsa l'hatos atzmol l'derech tova, if a person chooses to go on the path of the good, uliyos tzadik, or shizbeda, when he wants to be a tzadik, then he has the, he has the permission, he has the right to do that. Then Rotsa l'hatos atzmol l'derech ron, if a person wants to go down the path of evil, uliyos rasha, or shizbeda, and to do that, the path is, that, that choice is available to him, right? Everyone has two choices, right? Just choose the right thing, what's the big deal? Right? 
Right, that's what it says in the pasuk. Who should cast the Torah? That's what it says in the pasuk. Kain Adam he yake echem imenu. That if when when Adam, Hashem says that if Adam would eat from the etz das tovarah, he'll be like one of us. The little das tovarah to know the difference between good and evil. Klomer hein min zesh shall Adam ha yachid ba'olam vein min sheni domelo. That if he would eat from the etz das tovarah, he would be the only one in the in the world who would have be beyond free choice. Right, so that's why he couldn't eat from it. But other than that, man has free choice. Right. And then we finish up in the Rambam there, and we say, Man has the free choice to do whatever he wants, and no one's presenting you, preventing a man from doing good or from doing bad. Implying that it's, a simple, it's an intellectual choice that we have. Do good or do bad, right? That was just the way Hashem planned things to be, was that we should, be, uh, we should have the choice to choose good from bad, as if, as if there's nothing else called the Yetzir Haru. As if there's nothing preventing us from making these very tough decisions, right? The implication of the Pasuk, the implication of this Rambam is that the Yitzhar is insignificant. It's intellectual. Just make a decision, right? Choose ice cream, choose chocolate, choose vanilla. Choose good, choose bad, right? Just make, don't make the wrong choice, make the right choice. Right? But that's obviously, um, that's obviously, you know, one of the greatest struggles we have is making these right decisions. You know, one of our greatest challenges when you talk about, you know, like, you know, every, all the hard things in life, such as davening, or like Shabbos observance, or mitzvah observance, or ever making any, doing any of those, that's all based, all rooted on Yira Sashem, right? Fear of heaven. And yet, it's just seen, if you look at the Rambam, at least there, right? we, didn't do, we didn't do a fair job of reading the Rambam, you know, like analyzing it, but in the, in the Pasuk, it seems to be just like any other choice. And that really, um, that can't be. And it's not just our question, this is actually the Gemara's question. The Gemara continues, second line in source number five. What does the Gemara say? It says, Atu Yerashimayim Milsa Zutrasahi. In source number five, the Gemara in Brachos asks, Is fear of heaven really such a small thing? Is, it really, is Hashem really asking us when he says, Ki im liyara, is Hashem lokecha? Is he really asking us for, eh, right? Like, what's the big deal? Why would you make a mistake? Vahama Rabbi Hanina Mishim Rabbi Shem Ben Yochai. Doesn't he say in the same Rabbi Shem Ben Yochai? Doesn't he say in his name? That the most precious thing that a Kaddish Baruch Hu has in his possession is fear of heaven. Shinamar, as it says, Yiras Hashem Hi Otsro, that fear of heaven is Hashem's treasure. So the Gemara itself asks that. Look at the Gemara's answer, because I think the Gemara's answer is even more difficult than the question itself. So the Gemara says, you know what? In yes. It is easy. Well, how is it easy to fear Hashem? With regards to Moshe, it's a simple, small matter. What's the problem with that answer? The Gemara gives. Right, we're not a Moshe Rabbeinu, right? That's almost like, you know, it's like a parent telling a child, you know, what's the big deal? Why can't you bring him to the batting cages and putting him into the batting cage where the ball's going 90 miles an hour? The kid's like, I can't. He said, why can't you? Right? Did you watch the Yankee game with me last night? Did you see... They were all hitting balls up in the upper 70s, 80s, and 90s miles an hour. What's your big, what's the big deal? Right? This entire school, my note, is, knows that. You can't teach everyone to sing. You can't expect everyone to sing. And this is Parsha. Yaakov Avinu, sparkless to his children, is an understanding that you can't give them all the same breath. Right? Everyone is treated differently. Right? The task that one person is capable of doing is not the task another person is capable of doing. So that's how we're created. So to, to say that when the Torah says, Ma Hashem Elkecha Shalomim Chakim Liyarat Hashem Elkecha, is implying that either the Torah is out of touch, or as the Gemara says, the Torah was written simply for Moshe Rabbeinu, and, it doesn't, and it's not speaking to us, it's speaking only to Moshe Rabbeinu, which is also difficult. We believe the Torah is not, wasn't just given to Moshe Rabbeinu, it was given to all Jewish people. So this is a very hard answer, the Gemara gives. It's a very difficult answer. It's not a, not a very satisfying answer. And then... Um, Okay, and of course when you're talking about spirituality, not physical tasks, but spiritual tasks, we understand that as well. There are certain people, right, who are tzaddikim, who, who achieve much more in their lives. We don't expect everyone to, to, you know, to reach that level of perfection. And I don't think, and the Gemara continues, and it brings a proof of this based on a mashal, and I think the mashal is also difficult. The Gemara says, Dama Rabbi Hanina, as Rabbi Hanina says, mashal, it's an, we, what, to what can we compare this? What's the analogy that we can understand this based upon? La Adam to a person Shemavak Shemimenu Kli Gadol V'Yeshlo Domalav Kakatan. If you ask from a person from a Kli Gadol for a big barrel for a big pot, and he owns a big pot, all he has to do is take it out for you and give it to you. 
Then no, Doma love could clean cut them. That big pot is like a small pot, meaning if that big pot is already in your cabinets, then it's no big deal to give someone the big pot. If you already have it within your warehouse, within your storehouse, to give it is no big deal. But cut on vein low, if someone asks you for a small pot, and you don't even have a small pot, then Doma love could clean cut You might as well be asking for the biggest pot in the world. Right? If someone has something, then no matter what the size of what you're asking for them to be, to give it to you is easy, to lend it to you. But if a person doesn't have what you're asking from them, no matter how insignificant it might be, if it doesn't, they don't have it, then it's not easy, it's hard, right? It um, reminds me of a very precious conversation my children had. My children had. They, uh, once that my son wanted, um, wanted to charge my daughter to play with the toy of his. So um, he, he first wanted a dollar, and that wasn't reasonable. So then um, he wanted like 50 cents, and that wasn't reasonable either. And then he bargained her down to three pennies, to three cents to play with his toy. And she said she couldn't afford it. So he said to her, why? It's only three cents. So she's, she, 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 she's very, you know, I think she's smart. She, she said to him, it's a lot of money because I don't have it. So he said, it's only three cents, but I don't have three cents. So you might as well be asking me for a million dollars. A million dollars and three cents are really all the same. If I don't have three cents, then it might as well be a million dollars. And that's exactly what the Gemara's here is saying. Is right. The, the Gemara thing that's, that's a good, good answer for Moshe Rabbeinu, who had Yerush Shemayim in his storehouse. It's a small thing. For those of us who don't have Yerush Shemayim, that's a big thing because we don't even know where to begin. We don't even know. We don't even have the recognition, the cognizance that he has. So this is also difficult. This Gemara talking about things that are difficult for Hashem, things that are difficult for us. Right? It seems to be a little bit out of touch. So, um, in order to answer these questions. I think we have to distinguish between things that are... What does it mean that something is difficult? Right? What it makes something difficult, a difficult task? So, um, things can be physically difficult. Right? Things can be hard, hard to achieve. Building something from scratch can be difficult. Labor, physical labor can be difficult. It can be, it can be, right? it can be difficult because it's just physically challenging. So we're learning about, we start talking about next week's Parsha, the work, the Avoda. Perach that the Jewish people had to do was Perach next week's parsha. It's difficult. Another things can also be not physically challenging, it can be mentally challenging, right? Something which is hard, which requires you to think or abstractly or not analyze, or something which requires you to um, work hard at. It can be difficult mentally. It can be mentally taxing. But um, but there's another kind of fit, difficult also. I think this is the difficult that we're using. We're talking about a Kaddish Baruch and maybe also by by man in this gemara. That something is difficult when it's unexpected, when it's not prepared for, right? Something can, you hear people say all the time, you know, it wouldn't have been a big deal if I was prepared for it. You know, if I would have been, if I would have known that this was going to happen, I could have done things differently, right? We, we use this, we talk about tragedy. The tragedies are, tra tragedies are tragic, but sometimes when we have the opportunity to prepare for them, it's not so sudden, so it's a little bit less difficult, right? Or just things that are, un that are annoying or unfortunate in our lives. That they're, they're more difficult when they're not prepared for, right? When, uh, you, you know, if your car's engine is going, and you've been thinking about it and preparing for it, and the car breaks down, it's annoying and it's difficult. You know, you have to spend money on a new car. But if uh, your car is totaled, and you didn't, totally didn't anticipate it, now you're out all this money. So that's, right, at least, in the, at least in the short term, it's much more difficult. Because you totally didn't have the, didn't have the preparation, you didn't have the mindset to deal with it. So, um, things that are meant to happen and they're planned for, right, are in some ways easier than things that are unplanned for. So, in the Drash David, um, he quotes from a safe, which I couldn't find, Or Yahel, he quotes the following. He says that, why is it that Kriyas Yamsuf is so often the analogy given for something difficult in the eyes of the Kashba? Kashba Kriyas Yamsuf, right? The Gemara, the Gemara talks about how Kashba Zivugan and Kashba Kriyas Yamsuf. That marriages are as difficult for Hashem to make as splitting of the sea and so on. Right? Why Kriyas Yamsuf? Why is that the analogy? Is it just, or could you say simply, it's because, right, it's the most difficult thing for any of us to do, and therefore, if you, if you want to put it into human terms, what's a difficult task? Kriyas Yamsuf, right? That's difficult. That's really hard, right? But he could have said Briyas Ol, because the creation of the world, because the creation of mankind. There are other things Hashem did that none of us could ever, ever imagine how, none of us could ever accomplish. We can never, we can never split the sea. We also can't create the world. We also can't make, we also can't make man from nothing, right? So why does it specifically pick the analogy of Kriyas Yamsuf? So the um, Oriah Hell says, that, um, and he says, he says that, at the moment of creation, the Seder Habriya, the way in which the world was meant to exist, was that there be water and there be dry land, and the two shall never mix. Or the two shall always, 
like right? Water is supposed to be where it, remain where it is, and dry land is supposed to remain where it is. And the two are supposed to be separate from each other. So what did a Kaddish Baruch, what did Hashem have to do at, at Kriyat Yam Suf? He had to reverse the order of things, he had to change things. He had to put dry land where there was once water, and he had to put the water right where there was dryness. He had to suspend and animate the water in mid-air, whatever he had to do. So therefore he says that the intention is whenever with Chazal tells of Kashik Kriyat Yam Suf, it means that when things are not the way Akash Baruch Hu intended his world to operate under, which is in itself a problematic statement, because Hashem intends everything, right? Hashem is familiar with everything that takes place, and everything's within the works of Akash Baruch Hu. When things aren't according to the way the plan is, that the way the world should have gone, whatever that means should have gone, that's difficult for Akash Baruch Hu, because he has to, therefore, he has to react not to what he intended for it to happen, but he has to react to what mankind forces, he forces his hand to be. Akash Baruch Hu is forced, Hashem's hand, Kaviyacho is forced by mankind. That's what he says. And therefore, um, so for example, right, the Luchos, we're told the Mishnah, Mesechus Avos, tells us why Shri Yisrael Salach of Luchos is difficult. Because the Luchos, we're told, were created on the, the creation, the, one of the ten things created on Arab Shabbos, the creation of the world. Which means that they were, they were part and parcel of the fabric of the universe. The Luchos, the Luchos were given to us by a Kaddish Baruch Hu at Matan Torah. But they were, the world was created with the Luchos. They were necessary for the existence of the world. So when, when Hashem, right, when Moshe breaks the Luchos, and Hashem praises Moshe for this, Ashrecha Shashibarta, praise with your Moshe. Right, the passage says, Asher Shibarta, that you broke them. But the Chazal tells us it should be read, Ashrecha Shashibarta. The praise where Hashem is telling Moshe, Rabbeinu, what's praiseworthy is not simply that you made the decision to break the Luchos. What's praiseworthy is that you understood that just because this is the way things are meant to be, doesn't mean they have to be. So you understood that some things, things are changed. Kla Yisrael, Moshe Rabbeinu, Hashem is saying to him, now you understand what I have to deal with. Sometimes they force us to do things that we would rather not do. And that's, and that's difficult, because it's not the intention, it's not the way things are meant to be. So, um, um, you know, B'nai Yisrael, at the Chet HaEgel, we're told, because I'll tell us, and the Gemara and Shabbos tells us in source number 7, Shebeshah Shebanach HaShal Chava, Hitl Bazuma, that at the moment which Chava sinned by the, uh, in the Eitz Adas Tovara, so she was instilled with some zuama, whatever that means, filth, whatever that means, something which is not pleasant. And it existed amongst all mankind, this zuhama, yeah. this evil. Yeah. It's, it's like, it, I guess the simple translation would be like filth. Uh, that's like a very dirty word, I don't know, it's a better zuhama. It's like something which is just zuhama. We use zuhama to refer to something which is like yucky. Zuhama. Something which she, mankind was, mankind was imbued with this, with something that was not intrinsic to their creation. Man was, sin entered mankind, the zuham, the sinfulness, the sinful spirit entered mankind. And it was something which is derogatory. It's used in a derogatory it's sense sometimes of the zuham. Um, and Yisrael and the Jewish people, Sha'am Duel Har Sinai Pascha Zuhamasa. When did we go back to the pre, to the pre Chait? Adam Arishon stage at, at Harsina, right? So we had gone back to this stage, right? Because I'll tell us that Misa was removed from the world once again. Death was removed from the world once again. That the fact that we would have to work for a living was removed from the world once again. The fact that our clothing we wear out was removed from the world once again. All this was, all this was removed, right? So Kadosh Baruch was sort of some of that, a Kadosh Baruch Hu, the, some of that punishment of, of, of Matan Torah, Hashem saves from the as well. And you can still go through the midbar with, with, with the Shazman and with the clothes not wearing out. So, so part of that punishment is reserved for the Torah Yisrael, right? And Misa wouldn't have taken effect either. Some of that a Kaddish Baruch Hu, right, holds off on, but yet that's reintroduced into the world because of the Shvir Saluchos. So why is Shvir Saluchos so difficult? Why is the Chet Adam Rishon so difficult? Why is Mizonas of Kash Mizonas shall, shall, shall Adam so difficult? Because it wasn't part of the plan. It wasn't the way Hashem Kash Baruch intended for things to work out. Um, and that's and that's why it's difficult, right? The Chazal tell us that we're told that the Luchos were were charus, They were engraved. It says Al Tikva Charus Ela Cheres. Don't read engraved. Cheres Luchos will give you your freedom. Kadosh Baruch Hu very much wanted whatever that means when He gave us a Luchos to come back to the stage and now the Cheres the freedom that we have for Adam Rishon and that now that now is taken taken away from us. So right? Why is the Misa of Aaron Cohen difficult? Why does it mean when the when we're told in the beginning in uh, when we're told in the Medrash in source number three? That the, it was difficult, the death of Aaron Cohen, as the breaking of the Luchos. 
because we're told also with, with Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron would have just made it into Eretz Yisrael what Chazal tell us we never would have lost Eretz Yisrael the base nation never would have been destroyed so all these things that a Kaddish Baruch whatever it means that he wanted this because Kaddish Baruch is really in charge but that part of his plan is that new Jewish people should enter Eretz Yisrael and never lose Eretz Yisrael should enter Eretz Yisrael and never lose the base of Mikdash since Aaron and Cohen had to die because of the sins of the Jewish people right so now that's as difficult as Shvers and in both cases the Kaddish Baruch was planned is therefore changed is altered um, so the question is though you know, we'll finish this yeah, very shortly the question is um, this is all about a Kaddish Bar okay, so how about us how about things that are difficult for us how does this help perhaps yeah. inform us in terms of what um, in terms of our expectations things that we perceive as difficult for us and um, how does it relate to the beginning of this week's parasha so um, um, as we said, things are only um, things are difficult when they're unexpected, when things are uh, when they're not anticipated. Um, so for most of us, right, for almost everybody, everybody, the reason why Yeras Shemayim is so difficult is because it's not a fear that we can sense. It's not something which we can which we can uh, see, right? If I can anticipate something, if I can see something, it's much easier, right? Not easier in the sense that I want it more, but it's easier to be fearful of something that I can sense, right? For example, you go into a dangerous neighborhood. Right? You're fearful. Whether or not that's the same year that we have for Hashem, right? It's not the all kind of fear. But think about it. A great person comes into the room. You're standing in the presence of the President of the United States. You're in awe. It's very easy. We see, we see him face to face. You're in a dangerous neighborhood. You're being chased by a wild animal, right? You, right, you get into a, an, a, an auto accident and you're, or someone's sick and you're fearful, fearful for their, that they're, gonna, you know, they're not going to make it. It's in front of us. Its presence is known. It's, it, it's, it's something which we don't have to think about. We can anticipate because we see it. The reason why Yira Shemayim is so hard is only because it's not so ephemeral, right? If all of us viewed um, Hashem's presence in front of us as we would a great, you know, a great rabbi, a great leader, so then Yira Shemayim would be much easier to overcome. So, how does telling us that it's not difficult for Moshe Rabbeinu in any way speak to the rest of us, the rest of human beings that have existed in this planet ever since Moshe Rabbeinu came onto the scene, before Moshe Rabbeinu? So I think the answer is as follows. We know that Moshe Rabbeinu, we're told, was, saw Kaddish Baruch Hu more clearly than any other human being who ever existed. He saw Kaddish Baruch Hu, what's called Ba'aspak Laria Me'ira. Right? We, all other Nevi'im saw him through, uh, indirectly, but Moshe saw Kaddish Baruch Hu Ba'aspak Laria Me'ira through a clear vision. So for uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, it's simple, says the Gemara, right? In, in, yes, it's simple, right? Says the Gemara, using the Lashon of the Gemara, yes, in, look, look in. Um, Legabe Moshe, it was simple to have your Shemayim. Why is it simple for Moshe to have your Shemayim? Because how can you not have your Shemayim when Hashem's presence is, ever, is always in front of you, it's always present? And therefore, Moshe had the ability. So, and therefore, that's your Shemayim. Is, is, your Shemayim is easy when you see Hashem's presence in front of you. But yet, despite that fact, how are we to understand that the Pasuk is speaking to the rest of us? So, what that means is we have to also. We also have to remind ourselves that a Kaddish Baruch Hu's presence is tangible. And to, to, you know, to begin that understanding, we can turn to the best source that reminds us of this, which is the Mishnah Maseches Avos, or the second Mishnah Maseches Avos, Parak Bey's Mishnah Av. What does the Mishnah say? It's a famous statement from the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, what's the solution? None of us are going to become Moshe Rabbeinu, right? Probably not. Um, so what is the what is the mission? What advice does the Mishnah give us if it says if you want to really be a, be a Yerei Shemayim, if you want to um, remember that the Kaddish Baruch is always in front of you? So Hestaka B'Shlosh Advar, a person should always um, look at three things. Vi'iata Bali De'Averu, and if you are constantly cognizant of three things, you won't come to sin. You'll have Yerei Shemayim. Da Malam Mcha, you should know what's above you. Eye and Roa, a seeing eye. Va'ozen Shemaas. And an ear that hears, the whole masach of a sef, the sefer and all your actions are written in a sefer and always recorded. So, what's the Mishnah telling us? Saying, of course, you're not Moshe Rabbeinu. You can't see Hakadosh Baruch Hu face uh, Abbas Baklar Yamira. You can't even see Hashem's back like Moshe Rabbeinu did. But it doesn't mean that you can't that you can't envision Hakadosh Baruch Hu as a friend to you. So, what does it mean? What ha, what 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 what's the limitation to your Hashemayim? Not being aware of Hashem's presence, not seeing Hashem's presence. So the Mishnah in Pirkei Avos clearly assumes that we all have that ability to sort of lower that barrier. How? To use our sense of imagination, not really our sense of imagination, but just to be cognizant of the fact, right? That the Kaddish Baruch Hu sees all, hears all, he knows all. And therefore, if we take that as guidance from the Mishnah, not as something which is, um, 
which, which um, paralyzes us, but as guidance for the Mishnah, so then Yerushimai would be easy. The, you have to be like Moshe Rabbeinu. He saw Hashem be'as Paklari Me'ira. So we don't expect you to have a as Paklari Me'ira, clear vision of Hashem. Whatever it takes for you to be, to be constantly reminded of this, whatever, whatever cheshmer nefesh you have to do, whatever work on your personal self you have to do, so that's also possible for you. Yeah, ki yim so fear him, right? Make, it, make the vision clear. Make, make it something which is attainable for you. And there, Ed um, Sur and Danielle Warner, if you're in the building, please go to the NPR to meet Mrs. Samuels. Ed Sur and Danielle Warner, thank you. And just to really finish this point, to bring it back to the beginning of this week's Parsha, so talking about Gula, that the Mizonos of mankind is as difficult for a Kaddish Baruch Hu to provide as the Gula. So whatever that means, it means that a Kaddish Baruch Hu, right, just like the Gula, we can say that mankind's sustenance is supposed to be given to us by Kaddish Baruch Hu, but we, Hashem forced our hands into this. But the Gula really, although we, we work towards the Gula, the Gula still remains in a Kaddish Baruch Hu's domain. Right? The Gula is, is, as we see from this week's Parsha, we're about to see, the Gula still is and always was a Kaddish Baruch Hu's domain. That was always in his province. Right? It's something which a Kaddish Baruch Hu is, is in control of whether or not he wants to reveal that to us. Not that we don't work for it, but it's within Hashem's control whether or not the Jewish people will ever see the Gula. As we see in the beginning of this week's Parsha, what does it say in the beginning of this week's Parsha? Source number 10. It says, uh, I also will quote the Medrash Rabbah, that we know that Vayechi is Stuma. There's not, usually there's a break between, between consecutive partials, but here there's, not, there's no nine-letter break between Vayichi and Vayigash. There's only a one-letter break. So we know that one idea is that the eyes of the Jewish people were closed. Another idea, quoted in the Medrash source number one, is Davar Acha Lamahu, Lamahu Stuma. Why is the partial closed off? That Yaakov wanted to reveal the Kates, Yamav wanted to reveal the end of days of Moshe Mashiach, but his eyes were closed. And we see that also later on, that Yaakov was actually right on the cusp of doing this. It says in Parak Memtes, later on in the Parsha, right before he gives the Baracha to Reuven, it says, Vayikra Yaakov el Banav, Yaakov calls to his sons, Vayomer heyasfu, gather, Vagidu lachem, es asher yikra eschem ba'achras hayamim. And I'll tell you what's going to happen at the end of this. Hitkapsu v'shimu b'nei Yaakov v'shimu es el Yisrael v'yichim. Gather together, my sons, and listen, my children of Yaakov, and listen to what your father Yisrael has to say. And then if you're waiting and anticipating what's going to come next, Right? Yaakov is about to reveal it. You look at the next pasuk, and he begins to give the bracha to Reuben. What happened, say Chazal? He was about to, sh- about to share with us what happened. So it says Rashi, Bikesh Lagalo says Sakates, Yaakov wanted to reveal the end to his children, but Nistalka Shechina Mimenu, but the Shechina was taken away from him. Vehitchil Omar Devar Machem, and he loses his train of thought. Whatever it means, either because, as is pointed out by the Gemara, that he saw that there would be a Rashayim would come from his descendants. Right? And he was concerned that one of them would be a Russia, and therefore he had them all say Shema Yisrael, because he, based on the Lush on the Pasuk, when it says, um, um, right, that he wanted to them, he wanted them to recite Shema Yisrael, that he was concerned that there would be some soul on them, whatever the case might be, Akash Baruch took it from Hashem, so that's still in my control, right? That's completely in my control. Mizon also shall shall Adam. That's still, that's within your control. But whether or not the Gula's in Kama Shem says that's in my control. I think there's a beautiful idea just to finish that Rav Shimshon Rafal Hirsch says in the next source says that if you look at the pasuk, it says it says Ma Asher I want to tell you as Asher Yikret what's going to happen to you. The word Mikre what's going to happen is spelled Kufresh He. Right. The word Kara is spelled with an Aleph. So the Pasuk is talking about Asher Yikre Etchem, what's going to happen to you? The word should be written in Pasuk Aleph, but not with an Aleph, but with an He. Right? As the Rav Hirsch says at the end of that first line there, as Asher Yikre with a He is Yoter Nachon, is the correct way to spell it. What is he trying to, what's the Torah implying by including the word, the word Yikre with an Aleph, not with an He? So he's telling them as follows. He's telling them it's supposed to mean two things. He wanted to tell them what would happen to them, but also there's a second underlying word first. Shimu b'nei Yaakov, listen the children of Yaakov. Rak kach yochlu gam hama'atim ha'chalashim l'nechol v'l'nitzachon harabim ha'giborim. If you listen, right, all these, all these difficult things, all these challenges that you have in your life, right, they can be overcome. If you listen to the brachas I'm giving you, I'm telling you, yikre, kara, I'm calling out to you, says Yaakov v'inu, through my brachos, I'm giving you each a message, right, I'm telling you what is, right, just like we said by, by every individual, is an ozen shama'as. You just have to be aware of the fact. You have to look for the signs. Yaakov is saying to them, pay careful attention to the brachos I'm giving you. I'm, yikre, I'm calling out to you. I'm telling each one, Reuven, Shimon, Levi, that each of you are different. 
each of you have your own path towards your Shemayim, right? That which you view as being difficult. I'm feeling you the, the ability to be Nitzochon al Arabim al Gibar. I'm giving you the ability to be successful, to overcome the challenges, no matter what shave you're from. I'm calling out to you and I'm telling you this is your unique path, this is your unique destiny. So, what we're talking about today, this idea that things are difficult, things are only difficult for Kaddish Barakul if they're not planned for, but for us also, they're difficult if we don't have a path. If we don't anticipate them, if we don't have a method with which you want to overcome them. And therefore, even though Yaakov Avinu can't reveal the Geula, says of Shimshon, for all Jewish children, he can't reveal the, uh, what's going to happen ultimately in the Moshe Mashiach, it doesn't mean that he's not giving them a path which to serve a Kaddish Baruch Hu, to achieve Yer Shemaim. Because ultimately, our intention is, our hope is that if we do serve a Kaddish Baruch Hu, and that we do serve Hashem with Yer Shemaim, so that a Kaddish Baruch Hu will also be able to reveal to us Ketz Yavav and bring the Gula as well. That's why the Malachim was, because that was part of the plan? I guess, well, I think more what it's applying is the thing that Kodesh Baruch was saying that, um, yeah, maybe because with the Geula is within our ability still to achieve that. I mean, that's like still very, I mean, as the world, the nature of the world is currently that, that, that things don't happen in a supernatural sense. That would be, that would be the Mizonos, right? So that would be to change the, super, that would be to, to act supernaturally, to change the order of the world, whereas the Geula is completely within our control. Meaning we can, we can, it's Hashem still has it, but we can do things to bring it down, so that's, we can bring it. Yeah, some right. That's the way the world is about to going to be. And we can still do it, but we're not.